Welcome to the Empowering Industry Podcast, a production from Empowering Pumps and Equipment as the voice of the pump and related equipment industry. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Empowering Industry Podcast. I'm your host, Charlie Matthews. Absolutely love jumping on the mic and bringing you special guests. Uh, We try to have this going out every Monday. Every now and then I have to take a break, but uh, you can count on us to let you know about that if we do. Uh, But today I am excited to bring you a special guest, um, and I think we're going to have a great conversation about the workforce and and just what we need to be successful uh, as people in this industry. So uh, without further delay, Carla, do you want to jump on here and tell everyone kind of who you are and what you do? Awesome. Hi, Charlie. It's very nice to be here with you. And I love chatting with you. Um, So my name is Carla Minette. I'm the CEO and founder of Minette Consulting. I am an engineer by profession. I have a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in engineering. And I spent uh, over a decade in the engineering program management um, field. So now I have my own consulting company where I bring the lessons I've learned um, thanks to all the mentors that I had the fortune to come across and and all the hands-on experiences that I had to, uh, I get to experience as well. So I love that. And uh, of course, I'm curious, what made you want to be an engineer? Well, so um, that goes back. (laughs) Um, In the beginning, when I was a kid, I didn't even think about engineering. So I grew up in Peru, and it's a very traditional um, country. Uh, Boys played with little cars and robots and girls. We have Barbies and things like that. So I never really thought about it um, until I moved to the U.S., And I just happened to be taking some classes uh, that I enjoyed in the community college and there happened to be physics and calculus. So I just discovered that my classmates were engineers. And then I just looked around myself and just say, well, I guess I can be an engineer too. (laughs) And I just enrolled for the actual curriculum and that's how I ended up there. And I loved it. Well, um, first, I I just, there's so much there and I, I love it. First, I'm so thankful that Barbie uh, has all kinds of different oh, yes. uh, careers now that you can be yes. as a Barbie uh, for our girls. The, and then the, the other thing, going to community college and getting your start there, uh, such a great opportunity to get exposure to so many different uh, opportunities um, in, in jobs, right? We have career, yes. uh, community colleges that have kind of that tech track, engineering tracks, uh, business tracks. Um, and so, you know, with that, and then I, I just have to smile at being like, physics is one of my favorite <laughs> classes. Uh, you know yeah. that you're on a track, uh, on the right track to go into college and, and getting those degrees when you enjoy that. And we're so glad you did. So, um, <laughs> I loved your mention also of mentors. Do you have somebody that you kind of think about, like that's the person that kind of helped me stick with it? Oh, well, with engineering, I'm trying to think about it. When I went into the the field, um, there were mentors in the job, on the job. So um, people that helped me stick with engineering, with the career itself or like getting the degree, it was probably more my mom. <laughs> my mom, um, she wanted always to be professionals and have a degree. And then what's the next degree you're getting? At one point I said, mommy, I, get, I got my master's, I'm done. <laughs> I'm not getting any more engineering degrees. Um, but uh, once I started working uh, here in the U.S., I came across uh, mentors. My first mentor would have been the the Oliver Love. He was my manager at the uh, at the city of Norfolk. And it was from my internship and the way he he treated me and the way he had me work with him, almost like a, a partner, not so much as a, here's an intern, let me give you some spreadsheets, some, you know, kind of assistant work to do. He gave me a project. He had me run with it. He took me with him to meetings and and exposed me to all that. So that really ignited my passion and my my curiosity, my desire to do better and to do more. So that was in the beginning of my career. So I was very fortunate. And and you also talk a lot about hands on, and I think that this is a uh, unique uh, to you and and some others of like how can we um, 
get people excited about what they're doing and, and change their thinking a little bit by doing these kind of hands-on activities. Do you have like, um, I mean, of course it sounds like you jumped in and, and did that in the project, but tell us a little bit more about why you think it should be both. Well, I think it's very important because uh, when you decide to be an engineer and you go to college, a lot of it is going to be uh, conceptual and a lot of it is going to be training you on how to problem solve or, or technical knowledge. And then you also have labs. Uh, but when you go into the, the real world and you get a job, um, there's a lot of things that you're not going to, they're not gonna stick uh, conceptually. You have to get out there and actually do it. And also uh, what's more important, not just get out and do the one thing, but do many things, especially early on uh, one's career, uh, because when you, especially for engineering, my degree is mechanical engineering, you can go so many different routes in the engineering field. Uh, so if you don't get to, to experience different things that you can do, you may not find and discover your sweet spot and what you can be really good at. Yeah. And the, the also things, a lot of the times we tend to just stay in the same job for, you know, become this expert in this one thing mm -hmm. um, in order to grow within an organization or kind of level up. Sometimes you have to have different experiences, um, but it's kind of nature to, uh, for an engineer to kind of go all in on one thing and, and really focus in. Um, how do you encourage people to kind of get outside of their comfort zone a little bit and try uh, these new activities? Well, one of the ways to be able to get out there and try different things could be via rotation programs or even just cross-functional training. So with rotation programs, it consists of people being pulled out of their current role where they're so um, accustomed to it and so comfortable to be able to try and learn new skills that stretch them beyond their comfort zone. So the growth happens there uh, for sure. And a shorter commitment um, kind of way to expose people to other experiences as well can be through cross-functional training where you may not uh, be able to leave your current role, but maybe you can do part-time, you can work and collaborate on a project with someone who is in a different fun job function um, just to get that, um, to increase your knowledge, your business acumen and the knowledge of the organization as a whole, which I believe is so critical. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, as we're planning and trying to uh, get together the speakers and the content mm -hmm. for our conference, and that's the Empowering Pumps and Industry Conference, it's called EPIC, if you haven't heard, um, right. check it out. So empoweringindustry.com. But if you, if we, we're bringing everybody together, bringing these emerging leaders, bringing, you know, seasoned knowledge professionals that have many years experience and bring, and kind of putting them together. What do you think uh, needs to change for our workforce? What do you think is one of those, um, you know, if we envision the future, which is our theme, right? Mm -hmm. What does that look like? What do, what's going to be uh, beneficial for the workforce as you see it? So I see that retention is a big issue. It continues to be a big issue in, in the workforce. Um, I also see that there is a lot of um, uh people just being burnt out and overwhelmed with the work. Um, so the way I see it is it something that needs to change is it needs to become the norm that investing in your people is important. It cannot be a, a plan, like an aftermath, you know, afterthought. It has to be something that is um, something that you get. It, it's building within your culture to take care of your people and your people will take care of the business. Yeah, that's great advice. And, you know, just so we don't get to that burnout phase and, and we don't get to that. Um, I'm not going to be in this industry or I'm not even looking at that industry because they don't have it together over there. Uh, so I'm excited about that. I'm, I can't wait to hear, uh, you know, just more conversation around it, um, building those leaders within our teams. And I know that you're doing that on the consulting side. Now you, you've done your engineering of work for a while and now you're helping others. Um, so what, what is it like if, if you're going to bring on a partner, um, how do they get in touch with you? What does that process look like? Oh, yeah. So I used to be very active on LinkedIn. I can still be reached via LinkedIn. However, I do have a website as well. If anybody would like to contact me, they can contact me via there or send me an email. Um, I'm, I'm very easy to reach. 
For sure. I enjoy, uh, this is why I'm in the consultant uh, line now. I enjoy talking with people, problem solving, um, collaborating, and just uh, taking a high level look at the organization and really seeing where the disconnects are and uh, where the opportunities are uh, that could be the most efficient. Yeah. And I know um, just kind of talking to you before the podcast, um, you kind of have this passion for engineers too and helping them along the way. And, and so, you know, being a female engineer as well, there, you know, there's certain um, criteria that you bring to kind of help them along, like the, you're the role model that they can do it. Um, But you can do that for male and female. But I, I think that there's a piece of that that's so important to mentor um, younger people and kind of get them to understand they do need mentors and you do need to try new things. Um, is that like that, uh, role for you? Uh, how is it ingrained in like your everyday? Yes. Even when I was in, in the corporate world, it was just something that I did. Honestly, I felt like I was so blessed by people who took me under their wing everywhere I went. And, uh, I was always ready to learn and I always, um, uh, I think I showed them that I was interested and that's probably why I was blessed to people that people found me and they would actually help me out. So I feel like that is something that I want to give back. That's, that's something that I've been giving back um, just throughout my career as well. Anybody who um, came into our organization, wherever I was, I was um, kind of just sort of mentor them inform- informally as well. So I think that mentorship is extremely important. Mentorship is what is one of the main factors that got me to stay longer in the last company I was in. It was the people, you know, people stay for the people. They're loyal to the people that are there for them and that they feel like they can lean on too. They're not in this alone. Yeah. And it's so important. So I, I love to be a support for, for other people in industry, uh, but also to connect with people like you that that's a like mind, you know, that are on a mission uh, to help others develop and grow. Um, and so I love that you're doing that in the manufacturing space and in the engineering space. So if, if I can, I want to do like a quick little rapid fire, a couple of random questions for you here. Um, what is your favorite book? Whoa. Um, I gotta think. I have so many and uh, now I'm blanking out. Um, there's the book Traction that I liked. Um, I, will, I, I almost want to look at my, my <laughs> Audible. <laughs> Let's All right. See. What's the last thing I have? The EQ. Yeah. Good to great. There's so many books. Um, I, I, I love to learn. Uh, well, uh, I, I have that like, now too. Go ahead. Yeah, mostly it would be personal development, I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I have that audio list uh, that I just kind of plow through too. Um, they all start running together after when you do it like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what about music? Do you have any favorite tunes or band or anything? Yeah, so I'm currently listening to a station on Amazon called um, Upbeat Pop. Okay. So it's kind of like catch it catchy pop to the, I just like the stuff that makes you feel good during the day. Yes. Well, um, I was just on, um, unstoppable, uh, 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 session and that music was playing as we first got there, I like logged in and I was like, Oh, I like that. It just kind of starts your day off really feeling good. Um, you can accomplish great things. Um, uh, now I want to ask a little bit about advice that you would give people in the industry. So, um, what advice, what is the best advice that you've ever received? Hmm. Okay. As a professional, uh, one of the best pieces of advice I received was, um, it's about who knows you, not about who you know. So not only about who you know, but who knows you. So you might know somebody But if there are people out there who can say, oh, I know so-and-so, I know her work ethic, I know, you know, how uh, the quality of her work, I know how she treats people, then then the opportunities and I feel like the doors open up for you. Uh, So it's not only about knowing or having a network of people, but it's actually about these people knowing more about you that they can vouch for you and open doors as well. 
Yeah. And uh, that thought leadership and getting out there and sharing that on, you know, different platforms, writing papers or doing podcasts or different Mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's so many different ways to get your name out there. But like you said, um, having somebody that knows your work and knows how you are, um, that that's really going to make all the difference there. Uh, okay. Last question here. Um, what is the best advice? I'm sorry. I already asked you that question. I'm going on my subconscious kicked in, in there. Uh, but I want to ask like a young person, um, that's coming into our industry. What would you tell them? So like a young engineer, you know, what, what advice would you give them? Um, move around. Don't stick to the one job for very long. Move around, get to try different things um, and get out there. You're in the driver's seat of your career. Nobody's going to come. Typically, nobody's going to come and try to set you up from the beginning. You want to get out there, get known and just be helpful, be useful, be, you know, find ways to make other people's lives easier at work. And, and they will start to get to notice you and know you and, and you will have more opportunities. And it would just be kind of like a, uh, a snowball effect um, in terms of benefits, I feel. I absolutely love that. And if there's, I'll just kind of give you the last word here. Is there anything else you want to leave our audience list, you know, thinking on? Oh, wow. Um, nothing in particular. I think that you have some very good questions uh, other than just... Um, when it comes to to wanting to, I, I hear a lot of companies talking about retention and retention being a big issue. And I feel very strong about the um, these specific characteristic, I feel that people that who are high potential leaders um, have. And uh, they, something that I've seen again and again is that they're looking for opportunities to grow. And no matter how much money you throw at them if they don't have those opportunities to grow and develop and to reach their 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 full potential um, they are likely going to look somewhere else so i think that is very important to remember that um this is is like a win-win to me it's investing in somebody to grow and develop and at the same time then that person is more likely to stay i think that that's just a, a great benefit and something to keep in mind as a company yeah, it makes me think about communication too, uh, how important that is so that you will actually know what that person's goals are uh, so right. you can help them achieve it. So you've got to actually talk to them. Well, um, having a plan. yeah, absolutely having a plan. Uh, Carla, thank you so much for your time. I've enjoyed this conversation and just I'm in, inspired uh, by you. I'm just thinking about, you know, the, the, there are role models out there and, uh, and you're one of them that is going to encourage this next generation to succeed. And and our workers today, uh, how to uh, care for their leaders, right? We've got to communicate and lead um, and learn how to lead. Uh, and so, yeah, so many great opportunities. So thank you for being here. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. Well, and to everybody else, like, share, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, share this episode. And until next time, be empowering.